Well, hello, AD. I'm Nina. And I'm Joy Moiler. I'm an interior designer, and I'm going to show you how to get Nina's home aesthetic. This is a Spanish Mediterranean home. The terracotta tile is the one that is definitely in keeping with Nina's aesthetic. It feels European, and I'm from Europe, so I wanted to also bring in my heritage a little bit. This particular tile is very, very similar to Nina's. It is the hexagon shape. It is unglazed. These are options of alternates of surfaces that are also available. This is a much cooler approach because of the glossy uh, marble materials that are used. This is a porcelain application which mimics the feel of natural wood. And this is a cement acoustic tile. And this, of course, is the original terracotta. The upper cabinets in this kitchen are just a very simple, like two inch thick molding. It's a nice way to ground the upper cabinets and tie them in with the ceiling. It's a nice detail. And what makes this kitchen a little bit more contemporary is that very square 90 inch molding. If they were to have used an OG molding or something that has arches and divots to it, it would become a much more traditional style kitchen. The arched windows are definitely part of Spanish Mediterranean architecture. I love waking up in the morning and having breakfast right here. The sunlight comes in, it's so pretty. And another element that carries out into the kitchen is the curved back of the arch of this chair. If you are looking to purchase Nina's dining chair with the web seat, you might find them at a very high end expensive shop, but there are definitely affordable locations to find the same chair. As a matter of fact, I found it for $257. I love the stools here, which are at the counter, particularly because I really love the softness of the cushion. The leather seat adds a real softness to the space because everything else in the room is very hard lined. These stools, I mean, they could be found like on Etsy or something like that, you know? Let's support the Etsy craftspeople. They produce wonderful wares and it's out there. Go find it. Also, the cushions are something that can be made at home. You can do it yourself. You might have an old leather jacket that you love. Don't just throw it away. Cut that jacket up, fold it up, make yourself some cushions, get some foam, take it to your local shoemaker and he'll gladly stitch the leather for you so you don't have to break your own needles at home. There's a large pendant fixture, actually two of them, hanging over the dining table. It's a nice sort of canvas fabric with a metal circular base. And it's a wonderful shape in the space that's very, very hard edge, 90 degrees, so it softens the room. Some of the accents that are really jumping out to me are the unlacquered brass hardware. With time, they will age and get more beautiful. Unlacquered brass will develop a wonderful patina over time, especially good quality unlacquered brass. Tends to run in a rather expensive form, but there are many, many options of gold tone brass hardware on the market. For example, we have three types here. The style is essentially the same, linear, with supporting post. If you run across a vintage shop or an architectural salvage company, it is so much fun to dig through the bins and find old hardware that's looking for an opportunity to be brought back to life. And also keep in mind that if you find something that is not the finish that you want, but you love the shape, you love the way it feels in your hand, these things can be resurfaced. Sand it down as a little DIY project and you can spray it or you can take it to someone and have it replated. That stove is reminiscent of an old school 
Aga stove, a stove that you would have found in a provincial estate or country home in Europe in the 18th, 19th century, a stove that would be used both to cook on and to warm the home as well. It's called Il Ve. It is an Italian stove that we had shipped in from Italy. These stoves are handmade. It could be a La Cornu, which will run up to $18,000, a Smeg, stove maybe five six seven thousand dollars you can also get a stove from lowe's which is a similar style that's about four thousand dollars also if you're doing a renovation and you're bringing one of these new european style stoves into your home consider the BTUs. They are going to take a great deal of energy from your home you're going to see that in your utility bill now let's move on to Nina's living room. The first thing that catches my attention, obviously, is the painted fireplace. Now, the use of a black fireplace is something that might be very daunting and very imposing to some. But I really wanted the fireplace to be a statement. It might be something that you might have to convince whoever else lives in your home uh, to do. So it's kind of like a risky move. But please keep in mind, paint is paint. If you go this drastic, don't be scared. Paint half of it first, then have a look and see how you feel about it. And you can always go back and repaint it. And she's done something fun here, which you see kind of often, which is fun. If you're not using your fireplace, maybe you have a non-working fireplace, definitely, you know, use a collection of candles of varying heights here to create a nice glow. They could be at the top of mantle as well. Actually, the ones in the bottom can be battery operated, so you don't have to worry about a pet knocking them over. And then having the real ones at the very, very top for safety, away from children and from pets. Oh, and as the day goes on, you get a nice, sexy glow. Who doesn't want a nice, sexy glow? One of the things that Nina has done here to tie in the black fireplace is she selected blackened drapery hardware as well. They're a very, very thin element in the room. That and the frame on the picture over the bar cart. So she's been very thoughtful about where she wants the palette to be used because it's a very minimal palette in the room. The coffee table is a rough hewn material. It's a very natural rough kind of material where everything else is sort of very soft and approachable. So it creates really nice balance in the room. I think it would be so much fun to do a DIY project where you basically collect shipping pallets and you get some stain and you put some wood on the underside to fill in the open spaces and recreate this coffee table yourself. I also love this large sort of symbol looking photograph at the mantle. I know she said a friend of hers took this image. I was shooting a movie in South Africa. We saw these baby little Simbas. Ross Cooper is the photographer and a dear friend now. And so he sent me a print and I blew it up and made it my centerpiece. You might have a beautiful photograph in your camera that you really love that you took on your travel somewhere else. And I always say the photos that you take are the ones that you immediately are drawn to. And if you have an image, take it to Staples. They'll be more than happy to blow it up for you and select a nice inexpensive frame that really just sets it off and displays it lovingly in a very visual space in your home. One thing I like to do with my photographs, or I might have a sketch that I've done that I want to play with. So what I'll do is I'll get watercolor paper, I'll print my photograph on watercolor paper, and then I'll paint on it and make it sort of little different, you know? It, it's similar to tinting a photograph. I usually turn the music up a little bit or something like that. I like to listen to Frank Sinatra always. Frank Sinatra is very relaxing to me. When I was 17, you know, whatever. I noticed that when I paint to up-tempo music like Beyonce, the paint tends to end up all over the place. Go to town with it, it's fun. Maybe you went to a friend's house and you took a photograph of their 
living room. And as a thank you gift for the invitation, you decided, oh, I want to do something nice and fun for them. And you just want to print that image on watercolor paper, paint it, and frame it for them. That would be a nice gift that no one else has given them, right? Nina's got a great bar cart here, and I love bar carts because I think they're wonderful decorative opportunities to have in the room. So your guests just gravitate to it, but uh, make it functional. When styling the cart, I like to start at the top, and I like using vintage pieces like a great seltzer bottle, something that anchors the bar. No bar cart is functional without bar accessories. Every bar cart needs snacks, and we want to make sure that people have an opportunity to have a drink, but also have something to nibble on so the alcohol doesn't go to their heads too quickly. Also, olives, lemons, limes, they add great color to the bar cart. And I love mixing metals, so I have absolutely no problem with using stainless steel with hammered mesh silver and gold tone finishes. I think everything works well. And after the third drink, nobody's gonna notice whether anything matches or anything anyway. So use whatever you've got. Nina's got some great drapery here. It's simple in nature, that's fine. What I like to do is, I like to get inexpensive drapery. You could get it from Amazon. Overstock's got great inexpensive drapery, but I like to add a leading edge to it. I take a trip to my favorite trim store. These are some beautiful, beautiful examples. And I literally, just take them to the edge of the drapery. There are so many different styles known to man. You could do a two inch, you could do a three and a half inch. Uh, I recommend wider tape, of course, if the window is tall and large because scale and proportion is really important. And just apply it to the inside edge of your drapery panel. And if you don't sew, there's a wonderful thing called fusing tape. All you need is fusing tape and a hot iron. You grab this tape, you sandwich it with your drapery, and you get your hot iron, and you don't have to sew a thing. And boom shakalaka, you've got a really great decorative item on your windows. Custom drapery is something that you can certainly spend a great deal of money on, but something like this, purchasing an inexpensive pre-made drapery panel is definitely the easy way to save some money on creating something that has an extremely tailored look in your home. So I really, really love this dark color. It creates a wonderful, cozy envelope to enjoy a movie and sort of simulate that movie theater feel. And can you imagine just nestling in this big white sofa? It's dangerous, actually, to be in this room. This looks like it's a cloud sofa, aptly named, of course. I mean, I don't think I would stay awake very long to watch the movie because I would fall asleep immediately. You can find something like this from Rove. You can find something like this from Lulu and Georgia. Ballard Designs has some wonderful upholstered pieces and provide the same sort of quality that you'd want for a space where the family or you and the dog are just gonna pile onto it. When using an ottoman as a coffee table, it is definitely recommended that you either have a very large scale tray or a series of trays. A big tray is lovely for the big bowl of popcorn, for the wine bottles. Amazon and Etsy have the best finds for decorative items. I mean, I must admit I was sleeping on Etsy myself for a minute, but they are one of the first places that I look for things right now. Also, the beautiful moon-shaped lantern in the background. It's so mod, I love it. Look for shades of light, Y lighting. Amazon, again, has great lighting too. Another thing here that brings a lot of interest into the room are the pillows. They're a real focal point because of their strong graphic nature. When I see stuff like that, I automatically think of like a Mary Mecco, who is from the 60s and had these big, strong graphics on textiles. You can go to your local fabric store. You can get fabric from Joann's or Michael's. You know, get a couple of yards, square it off, stitch it, hand stitch it if you don't have a machine 
and make some big pillows and don't limit them to just the upholstery especially in a movie room get a big 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 36 square inch pillow and stack them you can lay on them they don't take up a great deal of space another element in the movie room that i find really alluring to have is carpet that is soft under the foot. In the same way that you have this wonderful, big, cloudy sofa, you want your feet, when they touch the ground, to be on something that's supple and it's comfortable. Whether it's an area rug or it's wall-to-wall -wall carpet being nice and plush, that means being at least three quarters of an inch thick. The Roman shades here can very well have a blackout shade on the bottom. When you take these down, it really gets really dark and it's like a real movie room. Now what a blackout curtain does is it's self-explanatory. It blackens the light, but it is a secondary layer on a curtain that when you lower it, it darkens the room. You can take a shade that's linen, a curtain that's cotton, velvet, anything under the sun and apply this blackout underlayment and it really just creates the enhancement for you to enjoy this film. The vintage movie poster is a really kind of fun thing to do. You might even find a old photograph of Humphrey Bogart or, you know, I, I don't know, whoever that you really, really love, Al Pacino. Blow it up and create a whole media wall of old Hollywood artists and actors that you really, really love. It's an opportunity for you to be creative and you'd have objects in your home that reflect your personality. Nina's home again is a Spanish Mediterranean home. And she was very, very aware of wanting to achieve that overall feel. She didn't do anything that was very, very drastic or took away from that original architecture. I'm a strong believer as strange as it may seem, that the home really wants the owners to appreciate it in its natural form. So think about the architecture of when you're taking on your own space, whether it's a colonial structure, whether it's Spanish Mediterranean or, or a Tudor home. Just be respectful of the architecture, take Nina's lead and continue to appreciate the home for what it is. Thank you.